Jason at DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at building a dust collector for the CNC machine. Now, I picked this um, Chinese version Cyclone up um, uh, off of, I think, Amazon. I'll put the, I'll put the link below. Uh, anyways, um, <clears throat> not sure if you can see. There's really no corkscrew. A lot, a lot of the... Uh, more expensive cyclones have a corkscrew in them. Um, and I think you can see in here what, what there is is this tube just extends down to about here. And so what happens, the intake, the sawdust comes in here. And uh, long story short, because of the, the weight of the sawdust, the idea is that this falls down, it falls out of this open into a five-gallon bucket. So the idea is this mounts onto the top of a five-gallon bucket and the vacuum goes in here and the input comes in here and the idea is is when it comes in when the the dust comes in here it hits this piece slows it down and as the velocity slows down then it falls down the tube and out so um you know again i don't think it's going to be as as good as one of the more expensive ones however I'm, i think i paid 20 dollars for this now i thought about 3d printing one and all that but i mean for for 20 bucks um you know, I think I got this under Prime or something like that. I, I got to look it up. Um, but I couldn't print one for that kind of money. And also, I think the height is rather important because a lot of the ones that are 3D printed, you have to kind of glue them together. And again, I was worried about resiliency. Now, this top piece is um, glued on into this uh, uh, flange opening. So this was not injected as one whole piece and for probably obvious reasons. However, one of the things that I, I want to do is, is this is going to be sort of a twofer. So I'm going to do two parts with this on, on the, on the um, DIY3DTech.com channel. I'm going, to, I'm going to show the general building of um, this uh, dust collector. It's rather simple and, and again, uh, won't be a big project. It'll be a couple part episode. And so, uh, uh, but on, on my other channel, my open SCAD, my, my DIY3D tech um, Open SCAD channel, uh, and I have the link below for that uh, website and channel below. It is I'm going to show how we can use SCAD to build the parts for this because in the assembly piece we're going to have to do a couple things. We're going to need a gasket to go around here, which will mate to the five gallon bucket to create an airtight seal. Now the piece is I could use probably some silicone or something like that, and, and but I wanted a little more elegant and also to show you guys how to do something like this and, and again develop something like this in SCAD. And then the other piece that matches this gasket is going to be on the other side. Now this is a rather tall structure um, in, in itself. Probably a foot, maybe a little bit over a foot uh, in size. Uh, I can probably actually measure it out. So it's uh, eh, C10. So, eh, about 12 it's about a foot maybe maybe 13 inches tall roughly however one of the things that is going to happen is there's going to be hoses here hoses here bucket here and there's going to be a lot of torque placed on this piece now what what a lot of people typically do is just drill the holes through this um, section put some screws put some silicone here and call it done slap it on the bucket However, the bucket top is, is rather flimsy, per se. I'm going to be using a five-gallon bucket, painter's bucket, that I got at one of the big box stores. And one of the things with just these small areas of, of this, about like a number eight bolt hole size for these openings, um, you, you know, it's going to torque on that bucket top. So one of the other things that I'm going to do in addition to a gasket here is I'm going to uh, also create a counter flange that will go on the underside of the bucket. So the, the screw, the bolts will go through these holes, they will go through the bucket top, and there'll be a matching flange like this on the other side with washers on the underside of the bolt to hold this whole assembly tight. Now what I may even do is make the underside assembly even larger, and that's probably what I'll do is, is make it even larger um, to distribute the weight of this so as it so the under so the flange will pull tight against this the the uh, bucket lid will be in between and again uh, you'll see this on the video when I go to assemble it uh, but it'll hold it again all tight now um, 
I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this design piece in, in Open SCAD uh, and show this on my other channel. I'm not going to show it on this channel, but if you're interested, again, the link will be below. I'm just going to show the assembly here. Um, but again, the idea is is to take that torque off that little area of the bucket and distribute it to a larger area of the bucket because I do see a lot of torque or reasonable amount of torque because I'm going to have a vacuum, rather large vacuum hose here and here tugging on this. Um, I'm also going to build an offset weight to go on the bottom of the bucket because again it's going to be fairly tall and I, you know, I'm afraid of it wanting to tip over a little bit so just kind of like a, I'm going to take some um, uh, uh, mill mine and, and machine it on the CNC to make a bottom for the bucket to kind of counterweight it. So uh, this is sort of the project we're going to be kicking off and, and put together. Um, you know, because one of the, the pieces is I'm using a rather large shop back, vac right now for my dust collection system. And it actually works pretty good. Um, and, and again, I'm using a smaller uh, one and a half inch diameter, but I am using a higher velocity vacuum uh, to do it. And, and again, it works good, but it, it plugs up the filter, as you can guess, rather quickly. So um, my hope is I can use this to eliminate the, the clogging of the filter um, because it actually, when the filter is clean, actually does a good job on my CNC dust boot and everything to really suck it up because I've got a venturi around the actual bit itself. So again, this combination I'm hoping solves that problem for me and because uh, the filters are about 20 bucks a piece and just a hassle cleaning it out. And once you get that small micro dust particles from that milling and stuff in there, it just, you really can't, can't get it clean again. Again. So anyways, um, one of the pieces that I do want to do is, 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 is take some measurements of this um, bottom piece. So I'm going to have the cal I'm going to take the calibers and, and get all my measurements up front. So my, my inner diameter of this is about 60, 60 millimeters. So one of the things one of the things I like doing is I've got these I love moleskin. Or is it, I, I call it mole skin. Some people call it mole skin, so I, I guess I'm not Italian. Uh, but anyways, I love these gridded notebooks for this and being a little bit old school. So what I'm going to do is just make some notes here of, of the sizes when I go to do this. Now, the other piece is one of the things to notice, and I can check this, but I can... I can roughly guess these are at 90 degree angles to one another and I'm going to oversize these a little bit in my model so I don't have to be too particular about that so um, what I want to do is measure the inner hole size so I got about yeah five and a half five and a half millimeters on the uh, ID so ID and it's very important you keep your IDs and ODs together so so you know what you're what you're talking about and then I'm going to create and you don't have to be the best drawer in the world again you just want to get the kind of measurements down so again this the the OD on this one is um, about 110 110 so the OD equals 110. Now one of the things, again, I'm just going to take the assumption, um, I think it's pretty safe that these are, are 90 degree angles, or at least pretty close to it. And, and again, I'm going to use the math and, and, and open SCAD. Now they do sell um, pins to go on the end of here to find the dead center of this. And if I was a true machinist, um, like my grandfather was, I would have those, but I'm just going to roughly estimate it by per placing these in the center. And then I'm at roughly 90, 90 millimeters on center. So center to center is 90 millimeters. And I just kind of want to double check. Uh, yep, they seem to be pretty uniform. And then just set across. Set across is about 64. And um, so one of the things you notice that I measured across and then I measured together. And then so be because what I can do is um, the, w the way I cheat, I, I can show that I probably show this in the SCAD video, but just kind of talking whether whether you're using open SCAD or Tinkercad or another uh, design application. This is really a square. So there's two ways you can go about it. You can calculate the spread as across 
or the easier way is to do it like this is the spread is a square and then so what you can do is calculate the center of this opening as being the corner of a square and then just create a square so this is roughly 64 64 64 64 and so if I create a, a 64 millimeter square and I align it to the center then my corner points are all for my circles can be all found here so once I know my origins of these um, I can just pop a circle now with open SCAD I can do the math and put place in there or if I'm using something like Tinkercad or Fusion 360 I can simply draw my square as a reference center it to this circle and then drop my um, circles so they're centered or you know the openings for this so they're centered on the square so just just kind of some handy tips on how to do that now the other piece is I want to do I, I need to take a look at my top openings so my top opening is about 54.5 so the top is just gonna make a note so the OD is 54.5 millimeters and then the OD is going to be eh, 49, I'm going to say 49.7 for ID. 49.7. Okay, so one of the things I'm assuming everybody knows that th this is for OD, these are for ID, so just simple caliber usage. So again, I'm going to go here. These should be the same, but I'm, uh, I think they're going to be a little bit off. So this is uh, 54.6. Uh, so that's pretty close. I thought it'd be a little bit different. So OD equals 54.6. And then my ID is going to be 48.9. That's where the, uh, it's a little bit off, about a millimeter off. So ID equals... 48.9 and I want to call this the side again don't mind my scribbling um, just kind of notes for when I sit down at the computer and do the design so now I've got I've got the uh, basic design I just want to make sure my OD's got millimeters all right so anyways this this is sort of the the kickoff of uh, this build so again I kind of want to share this general design and so what we're going to do is now move forward and build the parts because the other piece we have to do is I've got to build adapters these these openings are a bit of a strange size um, for my vacuum hoses so what I'm going to do is 3d print um, adapters to go on here and that's why I took the measurement so we're gonna have a couple uh, extra parts in this segment that I'm going to show so I'm gonna show building the gasket and flange for this and mounting it to the bucket top then I'm going to show creating the flanges for the vacuum hoses here uh, I haven't fully decided how I'm going to approach this yet um, I've got a few thoughts on, on putting this together, whether I'm going to go over these or in these. So my, now I have an inch and a half hose, and technically this, the hose will fit inside this opening uh, pretty tight. And so what I'm thinking about is just building, uh, you know, designing a model that fits over the outside of the hose and slides in here with a friction fit and, and do it as a bit of a cone in, in open SCAD is what I'm leaning towards and then epoxy the hose inside that fitting. Because one of the things I, I want to do with this is kind of make this... Um, you know, so I can upgrade it. One of the things I like doing in my projects is making them upgradable, if you will. And and so that's why I don't want to really use the silicone here and stuff. And so if I want to change the bucket design or I want to change the hose design, um, I can do that. And, and so part of me also wants to change... Um, on, on the top here maybe put a 90 degree on on this because you know the vacuum hose is going to have to come up it's going to have to make a complete curve you know complete curve like this into the unit so um, I'm thinking about using a 90 and then attaching it to the 90 um, and then possibly also a 90 here coming up because my um, 
hose is going to come down from the ceiling, come down from the ceiling, and then so it's going to have to make a curve, and the hose, you know, hoses don't like to bend that much. So again, I'm thinking about a 90 here, 90 here. Uh, I've got to design that out yet uh, a little bit, and again, I'll show that in, in the build stages. So I want to kind of show some of my thinking as I go through and, and put this together. So anyways, um, There'll be more on this coming, so so keep an eye out, and I'll put it together as a little bit of a series. I'm thinking I'll do this as part and connecting it to the bucket as part, and then this as part connecting it out um, to the thing, and then have one where everything is finished, and so you can kind of see how it goes. Because again, the idea isn't really just to take you through, you know, how to assemble one of these. It's to kind of give you some ideas of, of the design process that goes into, if you want to do something like this and adapt it to your needs, uh, Hey, how would you go about doing it, right? So anyways, um, if you found this interesting or you're finding this interesting, hey, give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel. A lot more stuff coming, um, again, with this build and then many other things that we have in the pipeline. So cheers and see you in the next video. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.